Welcome to this channel. We are going through the book of Jeremiah and um, it's a 52 day challenge to read through the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a very unique book in the Bible. The book of Jeremiah has is the 24th book of the Bible and uh, the the biblical pattern for the 24th year of the 21st century is the 24th book of the Bible. So the book of Jeremiah is a great guiding light into the year 2024. Um, the 24th chapters of the Bible are also guiding lights for this season. So that's part of the reason that this year I'm taking the book of Jeremiah, going through a 52-day journey into this book, and I want you to join me in this in this journey. Um, let's go through the book of Je uh, Jeremiah and see the light that this um, this book has for the season in which we are in, and hear what the Lord might be saying to us through this book. In the previous video, I, I looked at chapter 1 of Jeremiah, and we look at the calling of Jeremiah and uh, what, you know, what Jeremiah needed to be able to, you know, go through the season, to be a vessel prepared by God for the season in which he, he served God. And it will be good to look at that video, look at um, the part 1, a and B of um, the 52-day journey into the book of uh, Jeremiah. Now, in this video, I'm going to be we're going to be looking at um, this. We're going to be going to the second chapter of the book of Jeremiah, and um, you know that has a great light for us in the season we live. You see, it's very important to understand the season where you are in. Once you understand the season, it helps you to know what to, what you ought to do. It, it, organize, it helps you to stay organized. It helps you to stay focused. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And God is raising the sons of Issachar in these days to bring understanding of times and seasons so that we can know what we ought to do. But it's not just about knowing what we ought to do. It's about going ahead to do what we ought to do because it's not knowing that saves us is doing doing you are blessed if you do not just blessed if you know many sons of prophets in the days of Elijah knew that Elijah was about to be taken to to heaven but they, that was all they, they that was where they stopped they knew they even mocked Elijah do you know that your master has been taken away they knew they all knew but how many of them did what was necessary to move into the next level? It was only Elijah. So it's not in knowing, it's in doing what you know. It's not in knowing. What is it? Uh, what is the use of knowing that a flood is coming if Noah will not prepare the ark? What is the use in knowing that famine is coming throughout the whole world if Joshua, I mean, if Joseph had no strategy for surviving the famine? So one thing is to know, the other thing is to go ahead and do what is required. This year, I pray that the Lord will help you to not just know what the Lord is saying, but go ahead and do it. Let this year make a difference in your life. Now, as we go in, in, into Genesis, I mean, to Jeremiah chapter 2, in Jeremiah chapter 2, the Lord sent Jeremiah to go and cry in the hearing. Go and cry. In the hearing of all who are in Jerusalem, cry to them, cry before them. It's possible that Jeremiah was crying before the Lord because the Lord has told him that, you know, a terrible calamity is coming from the north. And Jeremiah will be crying. God, God is like saying, Jeremiah, don't cry to me. Go and cry to them. Let them hear. Go and tell them what is about to happen. Go and cry in the hearing of all who are in Jerusalem. So Jeremiah went to cry. What God told him, go and go and ask them. Go and tell them. You know, the Lord said, I remember you. I remember you. I remember 
when you were chasing after me. I remember, you know, how you were running after me in the wilderness. I remember your love of old, you know, just like, you know, in the book of Jer uh, Revelation chapter 2, where God said to the church at Ephesus, remember, you know, where you have fallen. You have fallen from your first love. You have left your first love. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, Jeremiah was telling the people, you know, I remember how much you loved, how much you loved me, how much you ran after me, the kind of relationship that we had before. What has happened? Why has Israel, why have my people forsaken me? That was what, that was what the burden that God was transferring to the heart of Jeremiah for the, you know, to send to the people. Now, what, what does that mean to us? The year 2024, you know, every year has its, has its face, has what's important to God. The year 2024 is a year of marriage, is a year of love, is a year of intimacy. That's what it's very, very important to understand this. Is a year of marriage, is a year of intimacy, is a year of love. So it's a year to emphasize, to think of the law of relationship that should exist between us and God. It's a season of communion. That's why today I'm looking at the season, you know, that is a season of renewing love and intimate communion with the Lord. That's what ought to happen. That this year will be a year in which you will renew love, you will renew fellowship, you will renew intimacy, you will renew communion with the Lord. So God sent Jeremiah, go and talk to my people in the first three verses. He said, moreover, he said, go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the, the, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. That was what it used to be. There was love. Israel was a delight to God. But that was not happening anymore. It was not happening anymore. You see, this is a season of love. The first 24th chapter in the Bible is about marriage. It's about marriage. Abraham's servant went and got Rebecca for Isaac. These narratives are not just there for the sake of being there. God inspired you know, everything written in the Bible, he inspired that they be in the Bible and also inspired the assignment of chapter numbers to narratives. The chapter numbers help us to understand the season where the word there in that chapter is most applicable. So, uh, Genesis 24 helps us to understand that the 24th season is a season of love, is a season of deep communion, is a season of intimacy with the Lord, is a season to deepen fellowship, is a marriage. So that's what we find there. And so in Genesis 24, Rebecca becomes Isaac's wife. In the 24th book of the Bible, which is the book Ezekiel, God looked at Israel as his wife, but now an unfaithful wife. An unfaithful wife. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 14 opens with what happens when a man divorces his wife and she goes to marry. Can she come back and all that? We'll see that in chapter 3 of Jeremiah. You know, so he wants this to be a, a season of renewal of love, a season of intimacy. He wants, he does not want the unfaithfulness that God found in Judah in the book of Jeremiah to be part of our lives. He wants us to recover, to recover from that. So God will view lack of communion very, very seriously in this time. You know, we won't, it's not a year to run after things. Is a year to run after the Lord. That's what this year is about. It's not a year to run after things. It's a year to run after the heartbeat of God. Hmm. So God wants people to spend time with him. In Exodus, in Exodus chapter 14, God invited Moses to the mountain. Come and spend time 
with me. Come and spend time with me. So, when you read uh, the fourth to the eighth verses, God was saying, Israel, what did I do? What did I do to you? Where did I fail you? What happened? Why did you, why are you forsaking me? I want to say that. You see, I mean, this scripture also helps us to understand what's going on. When people begin to forsake the Lord, and things become important, more important than the Lord in their lives, it's not because God has done anything wrong to them. It's not because, you know, sometimes people forget God in the midst of his blessings. In the midst of blessings, that's when people forget God. So when people forget God and they are no longer as zealous towards God, they are no longer enthusiastic, they are no longer chasing after the presence of God, it's not because God has done anything wrong to them. So, you know, in verse 4 to 8, God sends Jeremiah, say, go and ask these people, what have I done to you? What did I do? Verse 4, he said, hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what injustice have I done? Have your fathers found in me that they have gone far from me, have followed idols, and have become idolaters? What fault? What fault? He said, they did not say, where is the Lord who brought us out of Egypt? Now, this is the point. When people begin to forget God, this chapter gives us two reasons why people forget God. The first reason they forget God is because they are no longer meditating on what God did for them. It's no longer before them. Anytime you keep thinking of you know, God's goodness to you, and that's on your heart. You keep, you know, reflecting on the grace of God on your life. You will never, you will want to respond to God. But anytime people begin to get cold, they are no longer thinking of the grace of God. They're no longer, you know, reflecting deeply on the goodness of God. It tends to bring some coldness into their lives. Look at what it says. It says, neither did they say, where is the Lord who brought us out of the land of Egypt? Who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed and where no one dwelt? Who brought, I brought you into a bountiful country to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defied my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? And those who handled the Lord did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after the things that do not profit. So that was it. In the midst of blessing, I, I, I brought them into a land, gave them things, but all of a sudden, they just forgot me. Why do people forget God so easily? It is because they have ceased to reflect on the goodness of God. You know, the Bible, this songwriter says, When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Let this year be a time to sit and reflect on the grace of God. Lack of grace orientation is a cause of backsliding and coldness in the hearts of people. Count your blessings. Think of what God has done to you. The time you would have died and God saved your life. The time you were nobody and God lifted you up. The time that you were in distress and God saved you. As long as you keep these things before you and you never forget where God brought you from, you will never walk in pride. You will never go back. You know, Saul's daughter was mocking David for dancing. David said, you don't understand. You don't know where I'm coming from. The Lord took me from a sheep coat, from going after goats, and set me on the throne. Why will I forget my God? The book of Deuteronomy 1, Deuteronomy 2, said, beware that when you enter the land, you forget the Lord. You, have, you see things and you, you, be, you begin to think that, yes, it was my hand that brought me here. The year, this year is a time to reflect on the grace of God and return to God. It's a year of love. 
as a matter of fact, then in the natural realm, there's going to be marriages this year. There's going to be marriages. There's going to be celebrations. You know, people are going to, yes, even in the midst of troubles, people will just be getting married. You're going to see it. But at the same time, also, marriages will be tempted. Marriages will, 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 be, will be tried. Will be tried. Look at God complaining about Israel in the 24th book of the Bible. Look at uh, uh, the 24th chapter of, of Deuteronomy opening with divorce. So that's an indication to us that marriages are going to be tried. But this is a season of marriage. It's a season of marriage. So the second reason why people may forget God is when people forget God, it is because they have forgotten the value of God in their lives. They have forgotten that without God, they can do nothing. They have forgotten that without that, Paul said, I can do all things to, to Christ that sentences me. He says, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. So when people forget God or become cold towards God or are no longer zealous, it's because they are beginning to forget that without dependence on God, they can't go far. May the Lord heal every coldness in your heart this year. May the Lord heal your heart of coldness. May the Lord heal your heart of lukewarmness this year. is a year to revive the fire of love, of intimacy, of communion between you and God. Get back. Remember where you have fallen and get back to your first love. From chapter 9, he said, Yet I will bring my charges and... Um, I will bring charges against you, says the Lord, and against your children's children. I will bring charges for pass beyond the coast of Cyrus and see. Send to Keda and consider diligently and see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, what that which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be astonished, O heavens, at this and be horribly af afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken the fountain of living waters and have hewn for themselves broken cisterns that cannot hold water. When people begin to forget the value of God in their life, they begin to you know, lean on things. They lean on money. They lean on position. They lean on savings. They lean on connections. They lean on different things because, you know, they're beginning to forget where they are coming from. It's a terrible thing to forget God. It's a terrible thing to forget God. You know, so that's why God will call the church at Ephesus in Revelation 2, 2 to 7. He said, you have left your first love. That's the only thing I have against you. You have a lot of marvelous things happening, but you have left your first love. Child of God, I pray that this year you will not, you will return to your first love for God. Return to your love for God. Return to your love for the presence of God. Return to your love for worship. Return to your love for devotion. Return to your love for spending time with the Lord. And don't just crowd your life with things and then leave no room for God. He is your primary love. And he is the one that sustains you. If God is not there, everything will go down. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. And except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen are working in vain. Never forget the value of God in your life. Without him, you have no protection. Without him, blessings can fly away. Without him, people can go from, from greatness and come to grass, come down to grass. Now, what are the consequences? See, when people walk away from God, it's because they are deceived and have forgotten that they cannot prosper truly without God. What happens when people begin to forsake God and forget God in their lives? It brings unnecessary suffering. It brings unnecessary problems into their lives. See what God says in verse 14 to 22. Is, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he plundered? The young lions roared at him and growed. They made the land waste and cities are burned 
without inhabitants. Why are we suffering the things that we're suffering in our nations? Why does it look like the devil has just become almighty? You wake up today, he's dead here, he's a bandit, raised this one, terrorist, do the other one, and it's like, but it has not always been like this. And that's why God is asking, why is Israel plundered? That's a question I need to ask myself. You need to ask yourself this year, why these problems? When people begin to walk away from God, they also walk away from protection. They walk away from provision. They walk away from the presence of God. And the things that God means to them, they also begin to walk away from them. I mean, that's the, that's, the, that's the deceitfulness of backsliding. People, you know, begin to withdraw from God. And as they're withdrawing from God, they do not know that they are, they are walking towards death and destruction. May the Lord give you wisdom this year. This is a year to renew love with God. This is a year to renew your commitment to God. That's why we're going through the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah is about what happened, the marriage between God and his people that went sour and the consequence of it. What Israel had to suffer because she was walking away from God and would not return. Backsliding exposes God's people to attacks and problems that should not they should not have. It puts them at the mercy of people and things that should not have dominion over them. It compels them to look for help where there is none. This is a time to ask ourselves why we are going through all we are going through. Why do we pray and it looks like there is no answer? It looks like God is not hearing. What is happening to us as a people? That's what Jeremiah is asking. The year 2024 is a book of Jeremiah year. It's a time to ask ourselves some serious questions. Now, the sad thing is that sometimes when people are leaving God, they don't even know. They, won't, they don't even know. They don't even realize it that they are moving away from God. And before you know it, they develop some attitudes that are terrible. The first, one of the first things that a backslider can do is to get into denial. I said they say I'm polluted, but I don't. I know I don't have any problem. I know I'm okay. You see, backsliders open their eyes. I know I'm okay. Nothing is wrong with me. They are just talking. Nothing is wrong. I'm okay. That's denial. Look at it in Jeremiah chapter two, verse twenty-three. He said, "How can you say I'm not polluted? I have not gone far after bars. See your way in the valley. Know what you have done." You are a swift dumbre breaking loose in her ways. <laughs> As a wild donkey used to the wilderness that sniffs in the wind in her desire, in her time of mating, who can turn her away? All those who seek her will not weary themselves. In her month, they will find her. Withhold your foot from being unsure and your throat from thirst, but you said there is no hope. No. For I have loved aliens, and after them I will go. So that's the attitude, you know, you find when people are getting cold to God. You know, sometimes it's even difficult to confront them because they, I don't know what you're talking about. As far as I'm concerned, I'm okay. I'm okay. I say, what about this? What about this? They say, well, forget those ones. I can't even do anything about it. I don't know, but I know I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not polluted. <laughs> May the Lord dis deliver us from speaking lies to ourselves. You know, there is this cricket in, you know, when I was a child, we used to gather cricket and then, you know, you put them in fire and then, you see, when cricket is burning, oil is coming out, the fat in it is coming out. You know, they used to tell us, <laughs> my mother would say, look, cricket is, is burning in fire. He says, I'm enjoying oil. Is, see how fat I am. <laughs> The second thing that happens when people get cold before God is that they can try to use prayer to substitute closeness with God. Using prayer to get, you know, using prayer to get out of backsliding, you know. Verse 26, it says, As a thief is ashamed when he is found out, so the, is the people of Israel ashamed. They and their kings and their princes and their priests and their prophets, saying to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone, you gave birth to me. 
Oh, my God, help us. For they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in time of trouble, they will say, arise and save us. People wake up when there is trouble. That's what happens to, you know, the backslider. You know, he just keeps going. But when there is trouble, he wake up. He will declare vigil. He will fast. Everybody fast. Fast, fast, fast. Pray, pray, pray. He wakes up to pray when there is problem. Why do problems have to wake us up? Our relationship with God is, is, is to be a life of fellowship. It doesn't, we, doesn't, we don't have to wait for problems to come before we wake up. That's what is happening in our nation today. Oh, bandits, oh, this, that. When election is coming, we pray, 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 pray. After election, you know, life goes unusual. When there is trouble in the land, we gather. We forget our differences. We come together. We hold vigils and pro and bind the devil and cast them out and all that. After that, good. We only run to God when we have problems. When we need God to intervene. Oh God, this election, we must not miss it. That's not marriage. That's not love. That's not intimacy. If you run to people only when you have problems, then you're just using them. And our generation is guilty of using God. And God knows it. And so when we cry and cry and cry, he just looks at us. It's okay, keep crying, keep praying. I know why you're here. It's because you want me, you, you have been using me. May we stop using God. Say to yourself, this year is not a year of using God. It's a year of of giving myself, my time, my all to him. So people resort to prayer. They will say, arise, save us. And then God will say, but where are your gods that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise, if they can save you in the time of trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Why will you plead with me? You all have transgressed against me, says the Lord. In vain I have chastened your children. They receive no correction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. You see, there are things that prayers can't get us out. There are things that only repentance can get us out. There are things that only returning to God can get us out. And God is speaking to his people in the nations, in this country and in the nations, God is calling his people, return to me. Don't manipulate me. Don't try to manipulate me with prayers and with your songs and all the things that you do. Come back to me. Return to God with your first love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. When a thief is caught, it's because he could not escape. The thief ran out of luck. The thief is now made to face the consequences of his mischief. When judgment comes upon the rebellious, it's just like catching a thief. And in many places, you can say to people, or say to yourself, God, don't catch us. You know, he has caught us. Now, the third thing that the... the, 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 the backslider or the one that is getting cold towards God can do is to get presumptuous. He gets presumptuous. Say all this thing you are talking, we are just the people of God. We are God's people. See it in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 31. He says, O generation, see the word of the Lord. I have been a wilderness to Israel. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of darkness? Why do my people say we are lords? We will we will come no more to you. Can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Just pride. We are lords. We are in charge. <laughs> we are in charge. This year, it will be confirmed to many people that the earth is the Lord's. The fourth thing that can happen is uh, a plea of innocence. We are innocent. In verse 33 to 37, he said, Why do you beautify your way to seek love? Therefore, you have also taught the wicked women your ways. And also your sketch is found, and on your sketch is found the blood of the lives of the poor innocent. I have not found it by secret search, but plainly on all these things. Yet you say, because I'm innocent. 
That's what the backslider says. I'm innocent. Surely his anger shall turn from me. <laughs> I'm innocent. My hands are clean. Therefore, the Lord will save me. My hands are clean. Mm. Behold, I will plead my case against you because you say I have not sinned. First John chapter 1 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. When God says you have done something wrong, he says, as far as I'm concerned, I have not done anything wrong. That's, that's the order of the day. That's, that's what I'm supposed to do. This is what everybody is doing. What if, that everybody is doing something doesn't mean it's right. No, it doesn't mean that. You say, I have not sinned. Why do you gather about so much to change your way? Also, you shall be ashamed of Egypt as you were ashamed of Assyria. Indeed, you will go forth from him with your hands on your head. For the Lord has rejected your trusted allies and you will not prosper by them. This year, the Lord is going to prove to all that this earth is his own. We're going to see over truths. Those who trust in themselves, those who trust in God and disregard God, we're going to see shaking. God is going to shake. You know, some God is going to allow some people to be shaken to their foundations just to make one point that this earth belongs to the Lord. But the point is this. This is a year of love. You that is already engaged to God. You are a child of God. You, are, you belong to him. You are his servant. You are his bride. This is a year to return. To just humble and say, Lord, this year, help me. I can't do it by myself. I can't get too busy for you. That I can't get too busy. That I have no time for you. Lord, I can't continue this way. Revive your love in my heart. Awaken me unto prayer. Awaken me unto true worship. Awaken me unto communion with you. Lord, awaken me to fellowship with you in the word. Awaken me to spending time. What lovers spend time with each other, whether they are close or they are far away. You're always on the phone. You are calling. You didn't hear about someone. You know, you are not happy today. This year, you will not go days and not go come back to the Bible. We can go days, no through prayer, no through communion, and we're comfortable. Not this year. The Lord will help you to return to Him with true love and fellowship. Beloved, I pray for you as I pray for myself that this season, the Lord will help us. The Lord is calling us back to Himself. Yes, it's not that we're doing, you may say, it's not that I'm doing anything bad. It's just that. God said you are doing well. He said to Ephesians, but you have left your first love. You have left. God is not charging you even with any big sin. It's just that I'm not seeing the affection. I'm not seeing the enthusiasm. Yeah, the prayer is still there. Yeah, all the other things are still there. Those are what they are still there. But there is a, a, a level of communion that is missing. And I pray that that's going to be restored this year. The Lord bless you.